Hello everybody. Well, most of you are looking at Universal Crossovers with House of Frankenstein. Dr. Gustav Niemann escapes from prison along with his hunchback assistant, Daniel, for whom he promises to create a new beautiful body. The two murder Professor Lampini, a traveling showman, and takes over his horror exhibit. To exact revenge on Burgermeister Hussman, who have put him in prison, Niemann revives Count Dracula. Dracula seduces Hussman Hussman's granddaughter-in-law, Rita, and kills Hussman himself, but in a subsequent chase, Demon disposes of Dracula's coffin, causing the vampire to perish in the sunlight. Well, that's not good. Demon and Daniel move on to the flooded ruins of Castle Frankenstein, where they find the body of Frankenstein's monster, and Lawrence Talbot, the wolfman, preserved in the frozen waters. Demon thaws out the two and promises to find Talbot a cure for the curse. However, he is more interested in reviving the monster and exacting revenge on two, tra on two traitors' former associates than in keeping promises. Talbot transforms into a werewolf and kills a man, sending the villagers in panic. Neiman and Daniel save a gypsy girl named Yolanka, and Daniel falls in love with her, but is unrequited. However, as Yolanka falls in love with Talbot, Daniel tells Yolanka that Talbot is a werewolf, but she is undeterred, and promises Talbot that she will help him. Aww. Events reach a crisis point when Neiman revives the monster and Talbot again turns into a werewolf. The werewolf attacks the fatal wounds of Yonka, but she manages to shoot and kill Talbot with a silver bullet before she dies. Daniel blames Neiman and turns on him. The monster intervenes, throws Daniel out of the window, and carries the half-conscious Neiman outside, where the villagers chase them into the marshes. There, both the monster and Neiman drown in quicksand. Yeesh, well, that's kind of dark, huh? Anyway, let's look at some production elements of this movie. Frankenstein meets the Wolfman had been the first on-screen pairing of two Universal Studios monsters, but House of Frankenstein was the first multi-monster movie. Early drafts of the story reportedly involved more characters from the Universal stable, including the Mummy, the Ape Man, the Mad Ghoul, and possibly the Invisible Man. Working titles, which included Chamber of Horrors, a reference to Lampini's traveling horror show, and The Devil's Brood, emphasize the multi-monster nature of the story. The multi-monster approach, which emphasized box office appeal over continuity, was used in House of Dracula the following year and in Abba Castellum of Frankenstein. House of Frankenstein marked Lynn Strange's debut as the monster. Strange, a former cowboy, had been a minor supporting player in dozens of low-budget westerns over the preceding 15 years. He reprised the role in House of Dracula and Abba Castellum of Frankenstein, and cemented the popular image of the monster as shambling, clumsy, and inarticulate. Boris Karloff, had moved, who had moved on from playing the monster to playing the mad scientist, reportedly coached Strange on how to play the role. Well, that's pretty cool. The scream that accompanies Daniel's fall from the roof is actually the voice of Karloff, recycled from the scene in Son of Frankenstein, where the monster howls in anguish of finding Igor dead. Based on the monster dummy used in ice and laboratory scenes, was a mask by Lon Chaney Jr., who had played the monster himself in The Ghost of Frankenstein. Hmm. Strange did his own stunt work on the film, notably in the climax where he flees across a field of burning grass and sings into a bowl of quicksand. The grass was actually tumbleweeds, which nearly scorched him when they burned more quickly than expected. Stuntman Carrie Lofton doubled for Boris Karloff in the fire scenes, but Karloff returned for the final scene in the quicksand. Some continuity, newers, some continuity errors are evident in the finished film. After Dracula is, is thrown from the carriage, he looks over to where his coffin has landed. In a close-up, part of his mustache is gone. Also, when Talbot transforms into the Wolfman for the final time, his hands like fur. Hmm. Carl's performance in this film was his last in Universal's classic horror cycle. Aww, that's upsetting. But still, it was a good way for him to go out. So, overall, I give House of Frankenstein three jack-o'-lanterns out of five. Well, now that we've gone to House of Frankenstein, join me tomorrow as we go to the House of Dracula. So, until then, see you guys.